Hi, Hannah, how are you doing? Hi, I'm Matan. Doing well. Great to see you and catch up. How are you feeling today? It's a, it's a big day for you at, at Personio. Yeah, I'm very energized. Um, we just realized there's a green screen option uh, in this, this studio thing. So I've, I'm, I'm literally backstage behind that stage you're seeing behind me right now, uh, where we announced uh, People Work for Automation and our new funding round, funding round this morning. And uh, I think it's a really exciting day for all of us. It was a really fun uh, morning, but also um, I'm usually not stressed getting on stage, but with this announcement was just so important for us as a company that uh, I think it was, yeah, it was definitely a bit of tense uh, this morning, but feeling really good now. So yeah, so a flurry of, of big, big news uh, today, obviously a new funding round, uh, you know, the hug conference with, with thousands of attendees, which is your big conference for your, your user of the person, your uh, software, uh, and then the people work for automation. So if there's one thing to really uh, remember from, from that day, what, what's the one thing that people should take away from all of these news today? Yeah, so I think, I mean, between us, we of course sometimes speak about the funding piece, but but of course that's not what really matters. That's what helps us do what we can do. That helps us bring value to our customers. So essentially, I think that the big takeaway is that today we've we've launched what we believe is the future of HR software, not just of Personio, and something where we believe will have real impact on our customers. And therefore, I think the, the big takeaway, and happy to talk more about it in a second, but is is the launch of People Work for Automation and how it will actually supercharge all of the existing capabilities we have on our platform today already. So yeah, what I'd love to, to obviously understand is what is really, you know, people workflow automation, but also uh, more fundamentally, where, where did the, the idea come from, the insight, and, and what was the process to take, you know, in a large company like Personio to their thousand employees? How do you go from insight, you know, concept to a live product? What does that look like as a process? Yeah. So people work for automation is for us a new category of software. And for every founder that's on the call that thinking about that, I can highly recommend reading Play Bigger because that's something which doesn't tell you what to do for your specific business, but it certainly helped us kind of prepare through that entire journey of category creation. And uh, it started around a year ago when we kind of were looking at, we, we're, we're now at a stage where we've built a lot of functionalities for our customers and there's many more things we can and will build within what we so far called the HR operating system, but we also learned a lot more things where we felt we could help us differentiate and really go beyond from what we've done, done today. And so we started actually with Roman and me in his kitchen, which we spoke about it earlier, uh, end of last week, preparing for the strategy offsite, writing down uh, a couple of things we believe, we, what would be ways for us to differentiate based on the lead, uh, learning from our customers. And one of the, the core insights we got from our customers actually that a lot of their people processes go beyond the traditional merit of HR and involve a lot of delays along the way that really hold them back from important opportunities like closing that candidate fast enough and other things that are really key in, in the current environment. And therefore we've kind of taken these learnings and realized how they're using it, but of course some of the demands they're having and realized that we actually need to transform these fragmented people process that span across the entire organization and different tools into automated workflows. That, um, but really, what, what we've seen on the enterprise with ServiceNow, UiPaaS, and other uh, players bring that to small and mid-sized organizations in a completely different way because for them it needs to be easy to use, fast to implement, and much more affordable. I think kind of all of these things were like at the beginning flying around and, and talking about process with things where we just had them on the, on the wall and then they all came together and at some point that name evolved and really realized, okay, this is uh, something we believe in. And then we started talking to our, some of our customers. We have a customer advisory board. We spend time with discussing, getting their feedback. Is it really something that would drive their value? And um, so over the years, that uh, over the, the month afterwards that manifested, and when we were sure that this is what we want to do, we set the day-to-day -day as, a, as an end date where we want to launch it and then worked very heavily from both all the messaging and fleshing out the category and how it will be, how it will create value, but of course, equally important or even more important on the product side spin up completely different teams, um, change some of the way we're thinking about building product as people work for automation is not a new feature aside of the other things we're having, but it's really yeah. transforming everything as a day on top. And did you, did you, did you as a CEO lead that, that effort or what, what was your personal role in, in that process? 
Yeah, so we have uh, for each of our strategic pillars, uh, we have one uh, which we call a kind of uh, pillar champion. And uh, for people who work for automation, it actually was was me a little bit joined that with, with Roman, of course, from the product side. But there was one pillar I was much more involved uh, than some of the others because it's so new and because it really transforms a lot of things. So we had uh, really weekly um, check-ins with the teams on, on progress on bringing different streams together. We had a program manager driving that, but I was very closely involved. And also we did then um, monthly sessions, which we called Road to Lightning Strikes, so Road to Today's Event, where we energized the team around, where we educated people internally about what it is we're going to do here. And um, we met external speakers for that to talk about category creation. Uh, and so it was a, a process. I was very deeply involved, but really something with, as you mentioned in the beginning, a thousand people organization now, something where, where this internal excitement and occasion is, is, is just as important um, as building the right product. Yeah. You, so, so Hannah, you, you're a first time founder. I mean, not only that, you know, Personio is pretty much your first, your first real job. Uh, did, did you have a, a vision for, for what you wanted pers Personio to be when you started, or did you just take it kind of one, one step at a time? So, uh, funny, the, the BHAG, so our big, hairy, audacious goal, which we still repeat every Friday afternoon in the all team meeting, is still the same as it was back in 2016 when we came up with that on a weekend. So it's still Sonio be, uh, becoming the leading HR platform for SMEs in Europe. And we, in fact, built a business plan back then that lasted around 2020, I think, uh, that was fairly close in terms of revenues to where we are now, actually a little bit lower, but, but fairly similar. So we had that ambition already when it comes to becoming that leading company. But I, just don't think we had or I had no idea how it would feel so it was really stage by stage we, we would figure out what it actually means to build that category which we had no idea of uh, so I think we, we set that initial ambition um, but we uh, we then yeah just went day by day and then year by year to figure out how it actually what it actually means to build such a category leader so I think having seen you operate very you know very up close for for a few years now I think Clearly, one of your superpower is that you, you you have a growth mindset and you're able to evolve as fast and even sometimes faster than the business, which is which is hard to do. And, and I'd be curious to hear how you yourself as a leader can prepare yourself for the next phase of growth. Do you read a lot? Do you speak to a lot of, of, of mentors or, or experienced people who have gone through that, that journey before? How do you, you know, how do you prepare yourself and learn from one step of the business to the next? Yeah, so I think one thing that definitely helped me and us is is that we are first uh, our first time founders and that we haven't done any of that before because thereby we really came quite naive in it and we've we've really yeah seek uh, we're seeking and are still uh, from a lot of advice for people but never I think that's important by uh, just one one source and, and treating that as the truth but really hearing in from from different people. Um, over the journey then and then try, trying to figure out what makes sense for you and, and what do we want to apply and then sometimes it's combinations of different learnings that really work for your business so I think it's almost that that one learning of taking advice very seriously but but not literate and then trying to apply it on your business because all of the everyone if I would give an advice to to a first-time founder or one of my angel investment then then I could there's only like a, a direction what I've learned but they then have to take that apply to their business um, and one in the beginning if, if we would have listen to every advice literally uh, we would have built a very different company because initially people were saying we have to start very narrow and then go broader after and what made us successful is building that operating system from the beginning so i think there's a lot of learnings which or advices which we didn't luckily take up but we definitely listen to everything and then try to figure out what makes sense for us and what are the things that that relate and then resonate and then uh, and then also from that just keep building uh, as we have with one of our operating principles that seek to improve constantly improving what you're doing and, and thinking how you can do it better. And so today, a thousand employees, you know, six billion plus valuations, you know, big milestone. What's the next? How do you picture the next phase of growth for, for the business and for yourself? And how are you preparing yourself to lead the company through, through that? Yeah. So I think there's almost an element of our growth that's that we now know how to manage that. And it's just kind of general fast growth by doing what we've done before already. And uh, I think this is still very busy and something which we need to learn, but something which we, we can build on the experience we've done before. And this is just 
like we're at, at 0.3 percent of the European market when it comes to uh, small and mid-sized organizations. So there's still a 300x growth uh, opportunity just in Europe, just with what we do today. And I think keeping up that by by just kind of managing the growth as we've done in the past years, but then in addition, always looking for that new lay, uh, kind of the new growth curves you can lay on top. Because I think we what we've seen and what helped us keep accelerating our growth and keep it at really high rates is that we're not just doing one thing and keep doing that, but we're always looking for new things. People work for automation certainly being one of that new growth lever that comes on top. Some of the new markets we added that now have a similar characteristic of growth curve than the German market has initially. All of these things, of course, lay on top and, and help us achieve and, and maintain exponential growth. But then I think the, the, first, the last and most important thing probably to help all of that achieve that and come to life is just the continuous focus on on our own people and our own organization because essentially if you get that really right at this point there's so many people doing amazing things and implementing stuff and thinking stuff further which you thought as a ceo and if you get the right team and the right organization and they're empowered to do that then uh, a lot of things will happen independently from you and you just have to give them that space and motivate them and think big but but then they can do a lot of them stuff themselves yeah, I think it's a, it's a very important point where, you know, clearly culture, I mean, everyone talks about culture all the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a very uh, popular word these days, but I think you've really taken that, you know, it's only, at Personio, it's not only words, it's also kind of actions. I think you have built a, a very uh, distinct and, and very strong and, and positive culture. Um, so I'd be curious to, to hear how, you know, the how you've, you've build that culture you know what are the actual concrete actions that some of the entrepreneurs who are listening they can can learn from and, and potentially apply to their business beyond just the the buzzwords you know, what are the, the the actual actions that you've taken to that got you to where you are today yeah so i think one of the things you mentioned in the beginning is culture is really important everyone knows that everyone says that culture eats strategy for breakfast and so on however i think we really just were naive enough to believe that everyone will take that so serious that we were, took it really serious. And, and I think that that really helped us. So a lot of people that have been in other organizations just realize, okay, maybe it's not that important. Maybe I can uh, make kind of uh, shortcuts on that. And, and I think you just can't. And it, the most, one of the, probably the most important things when it comes to culture is, is hiring who you bring into the, uh, to the business. So luckily, of course, as an HR business, we early on, focused on building really strong people processes, including our recruiting process. We're already in 2016, when we were just starting uh, after our, around our seed round. We were at 10 people before Bootstrap, but around our seed round, when we started to hire a little bit more at scale, we defined a very clear process of five stages um, of a team lead, uh, an agile interview, team lead interview, peer value, and founder interviews. And um, still, uh, up until we just started to remove the founder interviews for some roles with a bar raiser, but up until uh, three months ago, me or one of my co-founders would interview every single person that's that's involved. Uh, now for junior people, we don't do it, but I still spend a ton of my time rec recruiting. But also we've, we've made clear for everyone else that's in the process that they have the same veto right as I have for candidates. Not only when someone doesn't match the quality of the role, but really when they don't match the culture. And thereby, I think, defining that process, but also giving the tools and input what people should look for. And there for us, Quite early on, we defined not only our core values, but also operating principles and very clearly said things like communication is key. If someone is not a good communicator, it just doesn't fit the way we want to operate. And therefore, we, we, uh, we then yeah, oftentimes decline people on that or uh, be diligent or act proactively. So a lot of these things that are really true to, to the way we see people being successful at Personio and keep looking for these same kind of people that bring the same um, yeah, mindset and, and behaviors. And I think that's that's probably the most important one. And then, of course, you can keep keep shaping and leveraging by keep reminding these stories every Friday in the OT meeting. There's one story on our values operating principles told by an individual employee. So a lot of the things you can do after, but when you start with a really strong hiring process, it's much easier. Or you can do a lot of things beyond that. But if you fail on this one, and if you do shortcuts in hiring, then um, it's it's really hard to to turn around the culture. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I just I want to share kind of an, an anecdote um, and, and that you know, highlights the fact that culture is not only across the organization, but it's also at the board level. I think the board at Personio, which I've been lucky to be a part of for, for a few years now, has a very strong and, and very positive culture. And, and you, know, you really 
go the extra mile to take the time to organize you know high quality interesting you know off sites and also you know, there, was, there was one other anecdote which i think is, is quite uh telling of how you think about 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 the board and, and the rest of the organization as, as one one you know unified team is you, know, you had two angel investors um in, in the early days that, that started you know really went along the whole journey from from the the, the very beginning and that obviously eventually you know, they, they, they didn't become, they were not as relevant as they used to be when the company grew, you know, very, very large and you had a lot of institutional investors. And But what you did is you invited them to a board meeting and to thank them, you know, give them gifts and really recognize the exceptional contribution. Uh, and then they just left the meeting. And uh, but it was a, you know, it was a really important moment. Um, and, you know, well, it sounds like a, obvious idea but but it's actually the only board i've been a part of where that happened you know usually people move on and you know you never hear from them ever again and, and there's there isn't that that extra mile to recognize people kind of unique contribution which i think um you know kind of w w works uh w works extremely uh extremely well and is super important um I, I think we've got yeah go ahead yeah i think that it, it's a it really goes back to yeah picking the right people also on board level and of course we were lucky enough that we, we were able to to choose the type of people we want to bring on board not just the funds but really the individuals like yourself uh, and i think that's that's really exciting of course but that's also about recruiting um and then yeah it's uh, treating people well is, is a very basic basic uh, thing but but something which which i think is, is just yeah makes it's common sense and it's just the right thing to do and um that that shouldn't shouldn't be an effort to do so I think so. I think we've got thirty seconds left. Uh, and so, as as a last last question, any any parting advice for uh, your fellow entrepreneurs um, in terms of how they can grow and scale with their business the way you've been able to do? So I think I mean I gave already the advice on on people. I think the one other advice in the current uh, environment, and uh, we're raising a lot of money, so I, I don't want to say uh, don't raise money. But, but still be, be careful when you raise money that you can actually, especially in the early days, do something different. So I think it really was helpful for us to bootstrap in the beginning until we figured so, uh, out our stuff, learn from our customers enough to then accelerate the uh, business with, with uh, funding. And, um, and then if, and if you do, uh, you're in a much better position to also then pick from the right funds as opposed to just taking money from someone because it's uh, available right now. So really, yeah. I think choose the timing wisely of your first round and then who you work with as well. Thank you so much for uh, your parting advice and congrats again for a phenomenal day and a phenomenal milestone with, with Dasanyo. Thanks, madam. Always great catching up and see you soon. See you soon. Thanks, Anno. Great, great stuff. Uh, both fascinating conversation. Uh, I've got two very quick questions before I let you go. Uh, one from uh, Alexander Leonida, uh, who says, have any good playbooks for finding the right employees, specifically dev or, devs or marketing? Uh, I guess kind of either of you. Um... So I think with, with hiring, there's, there's no one silver bullet, even for us, we're, we now have, have 65,000 applicants a year and then recruiting 500 of those, but, but it's still, uh, we do everything to find all the talent and then select the best ones. So, uh, so from, from, of course, active sourcing to posting to everything else. So, uh, building a strong employer brand, but it's not just one thing. You have to just play the full, full clever to and again hire a great team of talent acquisition managers that then will find great ideas how to find those people. And uh, a very quick one for me: uh, Are you going to be a decacorn by SaaS Twenty Twenty Two in October next year? <laughs> well, we shouldn't be too focused about valuations. I hope we can more than double our customer base again and revenues by by the end of uh, next year and. and uh, yeah, we weren't planning to raise now. Uh, we're not planning to raise next year. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see. If you are, uh, dinner's on you. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but good stuff. Uh, thanks both for sharing your time with the SaaS doc uh, community. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, congrats once again, Anno. Thank uh, and thanks, Martin. I definitely do. Thanks, Alex. Next year will happen in person again and can't wait to come back. It's as definitely well. happening. We'll have a, a Dublin office as well. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It'll be fun. Good. Oh. See you in the next.